Mike, I think what a great segue. We talk about getting in my pants. What a great segue to move on to NXT 2.0. Yeah, what I think awesome, gamey me. I thought an awesome show. <laughs> I thought it was too, and I gotta be honest, I was not feeling very good about this when we got the opening of the show where where we had Mandy Rose poolside texting JC and Gigi about their plans for Valentine's Day. I have a feeling that this was the high point of the show for you. Well, I thought the show was very good. I don't know if I'd say it was a high point. (laughs) But, Mike, you may not have liked it, but this is real life. This is how some females on the planet act. Some men do this as well. But I thought this was was awesome. It was different. It was different. That's for absolutely sure. You know, it's it's like, you know... uh, Gigi is on her bed and and Mandy's poolside and JC's in her room. I just I guess looking at herself in the mirror, you know, going back and forth. And they actually they ran sort of ran down the show. Mostly they just you know sent tweets back and forth to each other. Like if Gr- Gr- Grimes wins that title, uh, he can take me to the moon and back. And of course the other girls are like ew and and send like you know puking emoji faces and all that sort of stuff. But but I guess with what their intentions are, as far as being the youthful brand, I guess this is what the girls are doing nowadays, right? Well, I mean, essentially, each girl in there uh, would run down. They would talk about the matches, but they would talk about how hot all the guys are. At least they're not talking about how big a losers they all are. At least they're not saying, like, oh, my God, Carmelo Hayes, you know, ooh, how gross. At least, you know, these hot, young, attractive woman, we're talking about how hot the other wrestlers were, even Cameron Grimes. And this you know, is true. He's definitely Look. not set up to be a heartthrob, uh, and, but and this hey, is where he had his admirer too. So that's that's true. And this is where wrestling's at, at its best. Historically, you got to have women in there looking at the guys, guys there, obviously, you know, look at the women and, and all that sort of stuff. But again, it was it was goofy. It was different. I thought it was I was not sure if it was going to set a high bar for the rest of the night. But then they jumped right into the weapons cage match between Pete Dunne and Tony D'Angelo. And this was part of a trend of the night. You'll notice that everybody that was matched up on this show, it is somebody that is young that they're trying to push, working with somebody with vastly more experience than they do. And this was the first example of a match that I don't... It's going to be insulting to say that they dummy-proofed the match by, but that's essentially what they did. They played to D'Angelo's strengths. He kicked out of Dunn's finisher. They gave him that before Dunn ultimately got the victory. But I thought a good job, once again, for a guy with zero experience in Tony D'Angelo, once again looking good in there. Obviously, he's with Pete Dunn. But again, all the roses in the world going to Pete Dunn for doing some of the things that he did, including taking a superplex off the top of the cage with, with D'Angelo standing on the ropes, not even you know sturdy on the buckle but actually on the rope so i thought it was a great performance by pete dunn yeah and i mean i'd like to piggyback off that obviously a great job by pete dunn but you mentioned you know tony d'angelo as well and the lack of experience that this guy has but i I mean you wouldn't know that if you watched this match in a vacuum sure it was you know high spot high spot your big move but you know as far as somebody who has what six months, a year. I don't know how long the guy's been around, you know, uh, for. And for somebody that has that amount of experience, I think he's doing an awesome job. And, you know, a lot of people make fun of the gimmick or, you know, have snide remarks. But if this is the kind of match that Tony D'Angelo is going to kind of always build to, something involving weapons, this is a great character. Because, you know, we didn't get the old the, the trope of the guy breaking out the handcuffs. What did he do? He had zip ties, something different, you know. So I, I thought it, w- it was great. I thought both guys got over, obviously, uh, even in the loss. I thought Tony D'Angelo looked great. So 
Yeah, and I thought, uh, you know, an interesting, you know, it's, you know, somebody that's old school isn't going to like it, you know, with the, the, the zip ties. And, you know, I thought the choke that, you know, uh, I thought the choke that Dunn got on D'Angelo, that D'Angelo needed to, he rolled over to the toolbox that was there and he pulled out the, the snips and he cut the, the ties off of Dunn to break the choke. I thought that... It was an inventive spot. You know, you could say it's, you know, superfluous and, yeah, you didn't need all that gaga in there. But, you know, that's the whole thing. It was, it was a weaponized cage match. So there was going to be all that sort of stuff. And I, I thought it was, like you, I thought it was very, very good. And D'Angelo, again, once again, shows great poise. Toxic attraction for anything, you know, making, you know, poking fun at the opening of the show. Gigi Dolan and J.C. Jane. You know, we talk about things that you can't teach, you know, things that Jay Cargill has that you can't teach. Gigi Dolan and J.C. Jane just have personalities that are perfect to me for professional wrestling. And I think they are gelling better as a team. It's proof that when people are working with each other all the time, that's the only way a tag team can get better. India and Persia, India and Persia, I don't know where they're going to go with, with them as a team. If this is just all going to lead to a Dexter Loomis and Duke Hudson match, I assume that's what it's going to be with the love interests that they have with India and Persia there. But bottom line is, I thought it was another good performance for Toxic Attraction, who won the match and hold on to the women's tag titles. This is the first time I think I had seen Persia Parada. I'm not a normal NXT viewer, a regular viewer. I'm certainly not a normal viewer either. But um, I thought Persia Parada did a phenomenal job in getting over as a powerhouse, uh, you know, there's very limited uh, females on the roster that can wrestle outside of, you know, a few different roles. And I think having somebody, Persia Parada is not gigantic, but having a strong woman, you know, kind of like Micah or somebody of that level, uh, is always good to have around. This is my first time seeing her in action. I was impressed. I was impressed by her ability to throw around two people at once. So, good match. We got a Grayson Waller L.A. Night promo segment. Long story short, basically what happened was Grayson Waller violated his own protective order, and L.A. Knight is going to get a match with him. We'll see that on next week's show. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Dolph Ziggler, they, we'll talk about them a little bit later on. They play into the main event. They had uh, uh, Ciampa cut a promo on Ziggler a little bit earlier on. Ziggler would cut one a little bit later on in the show. Carmelo Hayes, Cameron Grimes, NXT North American Championship. Cameron Grimes is fantastic. He's great. Carmelo Hayes is everything that... To me, people have been saying about him, he is a star. He is a fantastic athlete. He has got a great package. Him and Trick Williams together are, a, I think, a fantastic team, and I thought this was the best match of the night. With Hayes' athleticism, even though he's inexperienced, he is coming along so fast. Cameron Grimes is just, bottom line, fantastic, a great worker, and I thought this was easily the best match of the show. The dramatic reading of the Hulk Hogan Brutus Beefcake promo. Please welcome the Mega Maniacs, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, Mean Gene? Now more than ever, with just one week away, I'm aware of how destiny is going to take its course, brother. Because just a few short weeks ago, bro, when I was laying in the weeds at Venice Beach, California, and I had Monday Night Raw tuned in. I saw Money Incorporated run across the ring with a metal attache case with the speed of a lightning bolt. And as it crashed into Brutus, the bionic barber beefcake, Blood Brothers face, I saw what I didn't want to see. I heard what I didn't want to hear. The emotions ran from head to toe. I chilled. I goosebumped, and I broke a sweat as I stood up, man, and I rushed from head to toe. I spent two days running up and down the aisles of Kmart, picking up that tonic, getting all that hair color together, and getting ready to do a number on Money Incorporated. I was sniffing for the hair tonic. I was sniffing for the butch wax. 
And lo and behold, as I kick down the door of the Ramada Indoor at 48th and 8th Avenue, just a bit north of the Mid-City Gym, I found the brother, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, with his feet propped up on an ottoman, laid back in a lazy boy, watching Mo, Larry, and Curly with an ice pack on his nose. Thank God for the man upstairs that Brutus the Barber is okay. So I took to the desert outside Las Vegas, chopping down some big nasty-looking cactuses, trying to dull up the titanium steel blades, chopped down a couple of small mountains, and then it came to me, brother. I knew that I'd just throw the scissors away because I'm just going to yank the hair right out of their heads. So Las Vegas, Nevada, and the whole wide world, what are you going to do when the mega maniacs run wild on you? The Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart, the Mega Maniacs, perhaps the next tag team champions of the World Wrestling Federation. The Hulkster has never looked better live and in mint condition. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.